Hi, I'm Roxana, and I'm an engineer here at National Instruments and Testan R&D, and today we're going to be talking about the Testan Simple User Interface in LabVIEW. So Testan ships with all of the source code for all of its user interfaces, including LabVIEW, and today we're going to be taking a look through that to see how it all comes together. So the user interface source code can be found in the Teststamp directory, and today I'm going to navigate to the Teststamp directory by shortcut by typing in percent teststand 64, since I'm using teststand 64 bit, and it'll navigate me directly to the directory. Here you'll see that we have the user interfaces folder, simple, and lab view. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the source code. And you'll see that there's the top level lab view project, build script, and I'm going to open that up. So there's two libraries that come with it, the teststand simple UI and the teststand simple UI dependencies. All we have in the simple UI library is the top level VI. All of its dependencies are naturally in the dependencies library. So you'll see the front panel here. We have all of the test and visible controls visible right on the front panel. You'll see that it's a small screen, so it doesn't take up all of the page. And if we scroll down, you'll see the manager controls. Now these are invisible at runtime, so we won't have to worry about it. And you'll see that the visible controls only say entry point one, entry point two, run sequence. However, let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like when we're running it to see the difference between edit time and runtime. So you'll see the login prompt, and I have it set to load the last loaded sequence file, which is the motherboard example that ships with testan. And so you'll see now it says test UT, single pass, run main sequence. These are configurable things from my process model that get configured right before we start the application manager. So let's do one test, a single pass, to see the behavior. We'll see the execution loading here, the dialog that comes up, and we run through, and in the report view, we see the actual report. I'll go ahead and exit, and you'll see now I've been logged out, and we are back to the visible controls being the way they were before. So how does this all come together? Let's go ahead and take a look at the block diagram. So you'll see that it is a LabVIEW state machine and that we are also following the LabVIEW guidelines for VI development. So what that means is that everything on the block diagram fits in one screen. We don't have anything off to the side. The code is commented and we give instructions on how to do and add extra things in the VI. We start off on the initialize case here. That's what our shift register here does for us every time. And what we do in the initialize case, case is we take all of the visible controls that you see right on the front panel, such as the exit button, and we connect that to this TSUI data cluster. This cluster will store the controls for us and any events that happen throughout so that they're accessible in every single case. And we can also easily pass this to sub-VIs. All we have to do is unbundle and we can easily unbundle using the unbundle by name function and see exactly what we're getting. So we store all of that information. Then what we do is we get a reference here from the application manager to the test and engine. So then what we do here is we set the front panel, the main application window for this entire application so that if we do launch any dialogues or if you have any sub VIs that come up, that everything will be modal to this front panel. From here, we move on to the configure connections case. So let's go ahead and look at that. In the configure connections case, what we are doing is we're connecting the appropriate visible controls to the appropriate manager controls. And this is where the magic of the manager controls really comes into play. So let's go ahead and take a look at the application manager conf uh, configure sub VI. So here you see that that test and control type def that we had, we unbundle those controls from it and we use the connect command. This method is shipped with the application manager and we connect the appropriate button to the appropriate function from the application manager. And we do this similarly for the execution view manager and for the sequence file view manager. And so this is why the manager controls have been developed so that you don't have to do any of the manual user event handlings that all of that has been configured for you already in the managers and you can easily use that to access different interfaces into the test and engine without additional development. And so 
Similarly, we do this for the execution view manager and the sequence file view manager. And then from there, we move on to the register events callback case. In the register events callback case, there's two things that happen. First, we register for a user event that's a LabVIEW native event. And then the second thing that we do is we register for any ActiveX events uh, in the register events callback you see right here. Now, the difference between these two is that the LabVIEW user event is something that we create specifically in LabVIEW in order to handle this quit application event. On the right side, we have this register event callback. This is registering for ActiveX events. So these are from the application manager. So when the application manager fires off the display sequence file or exit application, what we do is we execute this VI. So let's take a look at the exit application, for instance. And we see that here what we do is we fire off this quit application user event in LabVIEW. Instead of having to set up an event structure to handle these events, all we do is we set up this VI that executes when that event is called. However, we do need an event structure to handle the quit application events. And so we'll see that later. And again, we take the references and store them in the event callback and pass that on to the next case, which is start application. So we'll go ahead and go to the start application. Here, you'll see that we unbundle the application manager and we start it. So what this does is it logs in the appropriate users, check for your licensing, and most importantly, it starts the test and engine. Once that starts, we go to the handle events case. In the handle events case, you'll see that we have the event structure that we need to handle our events. Now there's two events that we have in here. The quit application event, which we saw being fired off in the exit application event that is fired by the application manager. And then we also have the panel close. Now the panel close is a native LabVIEW event that is caused by when the uh, user clicks file exit or clicks the close button at the very top right corner. Now what we do in both these cases is first in the panel close, we call the test and shutdown method on the application manager. That's fired. If it returns true, we move on to the appropriate shutdown case. If it's false, we stay at the handle events. Either way, we discard this event. Why we do that is that if the user meant to cancel and they didn't mean to shut down, it'll return false and we'll stay here and we'll wait for any new events. And if the user did mean to shut down, we'll go ahead and move on to the shutdown case. In the quit application, what we saw uh, earlier was that this event is fired by the exit application sub VI. And all we do here is move to the shutdown. So this is important because the exit application application manager event is fired only when the test and engine has been shut down appropriately. So that means that the user did mean to hit exit and we receive the message and specifically the UI message from the engine saying shutdown complete and we handle this case. So that means we're safe to go into the shutdown case. And so all we do in the shutdown case is we let go of all the references to our events and then we close out the test and engine as well. We close the reference to that. And if we are running this as an executable or as a built uh, system, what we do is we also close out the front panel. And then you see here that we pass a true to the uh, while loops stop condition and that means the user interface can safely stop running. And another thing I want to point out is that in between each case, the error and the next case's enum is passed through this test and UI check for errors. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. All we do here is that if there's no error, we pass out, we pass out what we got in. And if there is an error, we go to the handle errors case. So let's take a look at that case. And so what we do here is we have a reference to the application manager. We use that to display any errors from test and and then if the application manager is started, what we do is we go back to the handle events case to ensure that the user properly is shutting down test and. And if there's not an, uh, if application manager is not started, we just go to down to the shut, uh, shut down case and we let go of the test and engine reference and all of our references that have been made. And that's an introduction to the test and simple user interface in LabVIEW.